Harry Potter and his classmates are back, this time to solve a mystery in the Chamber of Secrets. And no, the mystery isn't, why is Hogwarts considered a safe school? It's actually, who the heck's freezing all these people? Let's talk about it on Adam Does Movies, baby. Harry Potter. Reviews. I recently took a trip with my family to Universal Studios and we had the privilege and honor of going to the two theme parks. This isn't sponsored, although I will gladly take money from Universal and they can bring me back to the parks this time for free. <laughs> Cause I'm now broke. I did some filming, I did some butterbeer drinking, and I thought to myself, we gotta talk about these movies. I haven't actually reviewed them on my channel, so please join me. As I not only talk about the movies and show clips, but also show some of the footage I took, some of the beautiful moments captured for your enjoyment. And if you really want, and I would appreciate it more than anything else in this world, Please think about subscribing by just popping that subscribe button with the end of your wand tip. It sounded sexual, it was supposed to. And please, no rush, take your time. I'll just stand by and wait. I actually have no way of knowing if you subscribed on the fly, so I'm gonna assume you did. And let's talk about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I forgot the name for a second. Christopher Columbus is back. It's 2002, one year, hot off the heels of the last Harry Potter movie. These guys churned it out quick. And you can't really tell because it's still pretty damn good. Although, it is the weakest of the Harry Potter films. For me, for me, I know a lot of people really love this one. I think the book is great. It's one of my favorite Harry Potter books. I didn't think the translation was quite there. Because the second book is pretty damn dark. A lot darker than the first. And that movie featured a dude's face growing off the back of a head of another dude surrounded in fire and getting burned by a child. These are family films. All the favorites are back again. We got the trio with Harry, Hermione, and Ron. We have Neville Longbottom still being a dumbass. We got Draco Malfoy overpronouncing Potter constantly. Just a sniving, conniving little worm. His dad's here this time. The dude from The Patriot that everyone hated. And I love his name, Lucius. If you name your son Lucius, you set him up for failure. Depending on your definition of failure, maybe rising through the ranks of an evil organization, a, a Nazi-esque figure. I mean, these are things that some people would actually say, yeah, those are pros. Those are, those are great. Not me. And certainly not Harry Potter. And even more certainly not Dobby the house elf. The bane of my existence in this film. Dobby is just annoying. He's, he's just the worst. Even Jar Jar Binks looks at Dobby and says, Misa thinks that's a bit much. We also get to know Mr. Weasley a little bit more, how he's into muggle things, which are non-magical human things, uh, like a car that he is bewitched to fly and the, the twins take it out for a spin, bust Harry Potter out of his prison at the Dursley Manor. By the way, one, one big issue with these movies as they go on, and the books kind of BS their way through them, it, it's definitely the weakest part of the Harry Potter books and the movies for sure, is they don't really give us a reason why Harry has to keep going back to this garbage family. The books say some crap like, yeah, there's magical protections over the whole area, and there's that woman across the street that's keeping an eye on him. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. It's still not a great situation. I mean, and, and at what point is it just too much to bear? Harry's in, Harry's in bad conditions over the Dursley house. Dudley's a pile of shit. Aunt Petunia's gutter trash. Mr. Dursley, we, we don't have to get into it. I mean, these people, uh, these people are the worst. The only thing that's topping them is Tom Riddle, who is the main focus of this film, a mysterious character who's speaking to Ginny Weasley through a diary. One that was planted by <laughs> Mr. Malfoy himself. But even worser! Then Tom Riddle is that stupid house elf Dobby who makes Harry Potter's life complete misery. He drops a cake on the Dursley guest. He bewitches a quaffle to go after the poor kid, throwing him on his back, breaking his arm. They miss their ride on the Hogwarts Express because of that dumb little shit. And they end up in a bad situation, almost killed by a murderous tree. 
lest I forget Kenneth Branagh as Gilderoy Lockhart, another perfectly casted role. We talked about it in the last episode, the last video, I was going over all the great casting choices in this franchise, almost nailed to perfection, and once again, they get it right. Lockhart's great. It, it, it's such a fun character. How he swindled his way to the top throughout his wizarding career. He's essentially the George Santos of the wizarding world. I have softened on this movie over the years. It was one that I used to kind of go, ugh, Chamber of Secrets, we could probably skip this one. Now I kind of encourage it. I enjoy it for what it is. No, it's not as dark as the book. No one dies. People are just conveniently frozen in situations because this mysterious creature isn't looking directly at them. This Medusa-like figure, this ancient thing that's looming in the shadows that no one sees even though it's massive. Somehow I forgive it for the annoying characters that are all over the place, not only is Dobby in this, but Moaning Myrtle, who hangs out in the boys' bathroom, is kind of a perv, and just can't get over herself. The big problem with this type of movie is because it has such dark elements, like kids getting corrupted by a diary and doing bad things, to a giant serpent trying to kill people, and a scary-ass wood setting with thousands of spiders creeping around, including a giant one named Aragorn who legitimately will haunt kids' nightmares, is... We do have kids at the core fighting this snake and beating it. I mean, Harry puts a sword through its jaw. It's just hard to believe that this kid is kind of like clumsily climbing up the rocks and he's like, eh, take this. Little, little bit much. And the way that Columbus films it and frames it up just doesn't really have that visceral experience one would expect from such a situation. I do appreciate how they kept in the fact that Fox the Phoenix flies down, rips out the thing's eyeballs by pecking it to death. These are family films. And I love the look they gave Tom Riddle when he revealed that he is in fact Voldemort. It looked like a really kick-ass way of playing Hangman. Just moving those letters around. Just like a, a very intense game of Scrabble going on. He's like, boom, I am Voldemort. I was Voldemort the whole time. <laughs> Some people say Voldemort. Some people say Voldemort. I believe J.K. Rowling cleared it up via Twitter years later by telling everyone that the T is silent. So it is Voldemort. You can, you can say I'm pronouncing it wrong, but you're wrong. This is from the same woman that also told us that wizards just shit wherever before toiletry was acceptable. While Chamber of Secrets is a fitting sequel to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, it wouldn't be until the third movie where I would look at it and say, okay, this is a serious franchise. This is a movie series I'm now actually very invested in. Whereas before, they were just kind of easy breezy movies that I watched in between the epically awesome Lord of the Rings franchise that was going at the same time. Now, however, you have got my interest. You've got my attention, Harry Potter. Let's see what you do with it. And we're going to talk about Prisoner of Azkaban in the next video. So please subscribe if you haven't. Like this video if you got some joy out of it. Make sure to comment below. Tell me what you think of Chamber of Secrets, where it sits in your overall ranking, if you have one, and if I'm on or off about my dialogue on it. And hopefully, we'll see you next time.